Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. I'm going to take you through now a past exam question looking at non-standard conditions being introduced for a redox system for a cell. So what we've got here is a past exam question from OCR A spec and we've got a electrochemical series given to us by the question. We can see that just up here. And what we've been asked first to do is actually construct the overall cell reaction. This isn't too difficult. Um, all we need to do is pick which one out of the two is the less positive. The reason we have to look for the uh, least positive one in this case is because they are both positive. Um, but also, if you'll notice at the moment, they are both written as reductions, which is the standard, really, for any half equation. Um, and so what we need to do is decide which one of them is going to be flipped because this is going to be, as it says here, a redox and that includes both oxidation and reduction. So the oxidation one is the one that's got the least uh, positive or the most negative value and in this case that's going to be the copper. So the copper equation is going to be flipped over and become oxidation and at the moment the silver one doesn't quite have the right number of electrons that we need. So what we're going to have to do for the silver one as well is we're going to have to times it by two. And that means then the electrons will cancel out and we'll have a nice redox equation where all the electrons cancel. So our overall equation is therefore going to be Cu plus two Ag pluses reacting to form. We can ditch the equilibrium arrows now because we've got a cell established. And this is going to be reacting to form the Cu2 plus and two lots of the Ag metal. Now it hasn't asked for state symbols, so we don't give them, but always read the questions very carefully. If they do ask for state symbols, make sure you provide them. Now the next bit is where it introduces these non-standard conditions, and this is where it gets really important. Explain in terms of equilibrium, so that means be careful guys, you've got to use equilibrium, which normally means use the word shift at some point, in your answer why the cell potential increases. Now first off then what we need to remind ourselves is what does cell potentials calculation look like? And it looks like reduction minus oxidation. Now, in this case, our oxidation one, as we've already identified, is going to be the copper, and we're going to have the silver currently as our reduction. So our current calculation is going to be 0 0.80 minus the 0 0.34. And that, of course, is going to equal 0.46 volts. Now, what they've actually said in the question, then, is the cell potential, so this value here that I've calculated from the current figures, has increased. Now, straight away there, I think you can establish where I'm going to be going with this. These figures are going to change. And specifically, because water is added here to the copper half cell, we're going to suggest and explain now why it is the copper one, so this 0.34, why that changes. Now, the way to cause for the change to happen is to increase the difference between the two numbers we've got here. If you increase the difference between those two numbers, then what you're going to safely establish is this value increasing, and therefore the cell um, overall having an increased um, potential. So why does adding water change things? So what we've got to remember is our half equation for the copper is of our absolute utmost interest here. And currently, as you can see written at the top up here, we've got our equilibrium like so. I'm writing it this way, um, again, just as it appears at the top, just to try and reduce confusion. But if you want to write it down the other way whilst you're doing this, and you're more than welcome to, but really the answer can be approached from either direction. It doesn't matter too much. Now, if you introduce water, then what you're going to be doing is changing the concentration of this over here, and most importantly, you're going to be decreasing that concentration. And so what happens in terms of equilibria, and here comes our word, we are going to see a shift. And the shift is going to be, of course, to the left-hand side of this half-cell equilibrium. And as a result, this copper half-cell this copper half equation is going to release more electrons. Now, OCR won't necessarily need you to describe this next bit. What, what that will do then is, it's actually going to decrease the value of this 
copper cell electro potential just over here. So it's like half cell electro potential we've got over here. It's going to decrease that. I don't know. Let's make up a number. This could go down to 0.2, for instance. And as a result, the difference between the two electrode potential values increases, and the overall cell potential is going to increase overall. Now, just to back up everything we've said here, why don't we have a quick look at the perfect mark scheme? Okay, and here it is. So let's have a look. Uh, there was another part of this that's actually asked for the definition, which I think is an important part to make here as well, because there's your definition. Uh, the definition was actually of the standard electrode potential, and it did ask you to state the standard conditions as part of your answer. So that's always good to see there, OCR's version of things. Now, we've got our equation, which we absolutely got right. So I'm going to give us a check just there. Um, and also, if we look a little bit further down here, we can see exactly as we were describing. Now, the Cu2 plus concentration decreases, there we go, or it's going to drop down from one mole per decimeter cubed. We do know it is one mole per decimeter cubed because we've got our standard conditions in place. And here we go, equilibrium shifts to the left-hand side. Now, that's why I kept it the way that it was written in the table because I made it really, really clear then which way the examiner was expecting me to say left and right. The way it's written in the actual question is often going to be the way that relates to the mark scheme. So that's just a tip from me. We can also see I mentioned here that more electrons are released by the copper. So we're going to kick out more electrons. But you'll notice over here what we've got is allow that the uh, copper or the Cu2+, plus, whichever way you choose to describe it, is less positive, more negative or decreases. So that's a fine way of saying the same thing just there. And here we go. The cell has a bigger difference in the electrode potential values. It has said to ignore that just the cell potential increases. Uh, the final mark is more subtle and is a consequence of less positive E value of the copper half cell, but we went into that with our answer. So you can see all of this here. This is what happens when you introduce the non-standard conditions. You effectively start messing about with the position here, and as a result, you mess around with the electropotential values. A tip from me is if you ever shift towards the electrons, so in this case it's going to be to the left-hand side, then you're always going to lower this electropotential value, whereas if you shift away from the electrons, so for these half equations that would be to the right-hand side, you're always going to increase it, you're going to make it more positive. I hope that clears up some of the work for you on how we can use not just the electrical chemical series that we give in the exam, but also the non-standard condition answer approaches. I'll leave you to the rest of the playlists and happy revising.